up, you guys? Marty Schwartz here with Marty Music, hanging out uh, with a good friend of mine, amazing guitar player, specializes in in that R and B vibe, but all around great player, Mister Carey Too Smooth Marshall. Dude, nice to have you, man. Glad to be here, man. Yeah, it's good to hang out again. Definitely, definitely. You got your BET Awards setting. <laughs> yes. You played the BET Awards? No. So funny story. When I first got the Helix, um, Sean Hinton is a good friend of mine. He had just performed at the BET Awards, and I was like, "Bro, I know you're using the Helix. I want what you've got." So he sent this to me, and I kind of use it as my base in order to kind of modify, like depending on the situation. But this is my like my foundational go-to for a lot of different artists that I play for. So could he? Just send a file on, yeah. on in an email or something? Yeah, so he sent it to me in an email. That's one of the reasons why I like the Helix. If you have a patch, let's say you, Marty's got a patch. Yeah. Hey, Marty, I love what you're playing. Can you send that to me? You can email it to me. I can upload it to my board. And I've got essentially the same kind of sounds that you were using. And that kind of gives me a good foundation of where I can modify. Or if I just want to use exactly what you're using, then I can use it. I'm intimidated by all the, when something has tons of function and controls and stuff i was the same way so i took it slow and you know piecemealed it and i got with people that already had a better sense of how to use it yeah i was like give me what you got i'm one of those guys if you give me what you have i can modify and tweak here and there so it wasn't a lot of heavy lifting so i don't want you to think that i'm some sort of guru yeah <laughs> that's not it so that's why it's, it still stays there and i've got a couple of different other patches that i go to yeah show me a couple of your favorites just while we're so this one's for sure kind of a cool like worship set <laughs> Depending on what room I'm in. It's got a little bit of dirt in it. So, so that's one reason why I like this one as well. So it's just got a few that I kind of bounce between whenever I'm playing. And it's got a very sturdy expression pedal. Yes, which I also love too. So it makes my life a lot more simple. <laughs> and most of the time it's a volume. Yeah, I use it definitely as a volume. Um, there are some occasions where I've used it in other settings with the wah that's included. Uh, specifically when I'm in the studio, just so I don't have to worry about carrying a lot of different gear. The wah works pretty good on it? Yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty solid. And then also this Helix, the Line 6 Helix, mm -hmm. which I've spent zero time messing with, <laughs> um, but I remember when it first came out, uh, it's also an amp modeler, so yes. you, can, you can use it to, you know, if you don't want to bring an amp, right. it's going to function as, you know, your digital. Exactly. Amp, which, I mean, that stuff has come such a long way. A long way. So there are a lot of people that, like I said, who really know the, the science behind it that can really capture uh, different kind of settings. And um, yeah, it's worked really well, like I said, for me in different situations and different settings, specifically in the studio. Um, so it's, it's well, let's really talk about you, those situations. Uh, we, you and I met about five years ago yeah. and uh, a lot of things have happened in the world in those five, <laughs> years, <laughs> five years, those five years. But it's awesome to be back hanging again. You know, you come from a, a different musical world and background than I do. Right. Um, which is exciting for me because I'm always trying to expand and learn. And I think the audience out there is as well. I mean, I guess I call you an R&B guitar player, but yeah. truly we're guitar players. Right. But you find yourself in the R&B world, for gospel sure. world. Yes. You, you were mentioning church gigs. Yes, for sure. I grew up in church, so I started out in church. Wasn't very good, mind you. Um, I remember playing when I was 11 and I was so bad that my amp wasn't even on. They were like, you're still too loud. It was just <laughs> it was that bad. With the amp off, you were too loud. Still too loud, yeah. <laughs> um, so just really kind of cut my teeth, learned in church, always had a love for R&B music. There was something about the genre when I would hear it that definitely connected with me. Being in the military, I got a chance to branch out and broaden my musical palette. So that's where I'm, I'm listening to guys who like listen to country. I'm learning about different kind of pop grunge music that I would never have been exposed to had I just stayed in my bubble. So tell me about that. When did you join the military? In 99. So in 99, I, I joined straight out of high school. Um, wanted to get college money. so I could Army? Go to or? Army. Yep, Army okay. for eight years. And then from there, just kind of you know, being exposed to different guys from different backgrounds would learn different music styles. And Did you play music in an official capacity in the military? No, so it was just, a, I was a hobbyist. You know, it's just when my downtime, I was in combat arms, so whenever I wasn't on patrol, I had an acoustic guitar. I believe it was a, an ovation on guitar. Very inexpensive. It wasn't an expensive guitar, so I could beat it up. And I was just playing my downtime. And then I participated in several different, like, um, they would have talent shows, and I won a couple. And I remember my last talent show that I won, that's when I was just like, I think I want to get out and try to pursue this music thing. I don't know where, where it will take me. I don't know if it'll be lucrative, but I just want to try to do it. 
So what kind of what did did you sing in that? No, I'm not a singer. So like what? Give me an example of like what you like something like you would have played. So I believe at that time, Indy Irie's video was really popular. So. Kind of set that going, and then like I had like a, I think it was a looper at the time, and I just sold it on top of it, and everybody was just like they were blown away because they were just like, "You play guitar? We never knew." The chords were really simple, but just the way that they were placed. Again, being from a church background, just like the rhythm and the upstroke, I was like, I was like, that's really kind of cool, and it just was easy for me to solo. Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas, yeah. Um, we met when you lived in LA. Yep. Mm-hmm. So you get around. <laughs> a little bit. You're yeah. following the the muse. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> for sure, for sure, for sure. <laughs> um, so you, you've been in Dallas now, and tell me the various things you do as a you know, a musician for a living. Primarily is teaching, um, teaching people how to play R and B, neo soul and gospel. Um, I do do some production. You do do? I do do also. Uh, all the time. Every I mo- do do it every, earlier. Every morning. Um, <laughs> do you have any in-person teaching? No, so it's very limited because, of, like I said, being in the space that we are now, a lot of my students aren't based in the U.S. So I have right. a lot that are in the, in the U.K. and some that are in Africa. So I, I do a lot of stuff that's online. Um, occasionally I may do something in person, but majority of everything is online. Cool. And I know we we've been hanging out, yeah. and and so I know that you have some group, yeah, but online group, yeah. What platform, video platform, do you use for that? So Kajabi is the main platform that I use everything in, but um, the course that we call is Carrie's Camp, right? And so the whole point of it is, it's just a community, it's a safe place to learn how to play R and B without feeling judged. So you do Kajabi for a live stream? Yep. Mm-hmm. So we use Kajabi, and we also use Zoom for a live stream. Okay. Yeah. For me, the majority of the private stuff is Zoom. So we can record it, and then later on they can go back and review it. We have a lot of students that are based in Africa, um, a lot of students that are based in the UK, and then, oddly enough, we have some people that are in South Korea. Cool. Yeah. So super cool. We're we're typically all over the place, and then I just we didn't realize how as much of a platform that we had in Japan. So we've got a lot of students in Japan as well. Now I'm jealous. Yeah, you gotta go. I like sushi. You gotta. Do go. you like sushi or yes? No? I'm a okay. sushi guy. Okay. Yeah, for sure. You do gig. Yeah, so I do gig. Gig and play and and also do a lot of production. So we had several placements last year. We've got a few that are getting ready, I believe, to drop at the end of July. So, um, yeah, I have With my hands in Songwriters? Or? Songwriters, uh, definitely for sure. So um, I've one of my, actually the co-producer is from Kenya. Oh, cool. Um, we were on a live and he was just like, hey, let's let's put something together. We shopped it to an artist at Sony um, and they, they actually picked up the song. So just doing things like that, I, I, I'm kind of diverse in how I'm spreading out my musicality. It's not just teaching, it's not just gigging, it's not just playing at church, but I try to have my hand in a little bit of everything. I liken it to fishing with a lot of different fishing poles. Oh yeah. You never know what you're gonna catch. Casting so. a lot of nets. Exactly. There you um, go. Have you been to Africa? No, actually, I take it back, I have. I've been to Morocco, but the Africa that I wanna visit, like the, like where like the Kenya, safari, for instance. yeah, I haven't been there. So I definitely wanna go check, check out those parts of Africa, um, even just for leisure. 
Right, right. Yeah. But it's always fun to like tie it in. Of course, if I can. I'm Write like, it I'm off always gonna make it. someone send you I'm out there. I'm always going to make it work. <laughs> <laughs> of course, man, yeah. of course. Is, that, is this your main guitar? So, no. Um, what happened was Ibanez and I, we started um, talking about maybe trying to find a space for the gospel R&B community. I realized Ibanez um, has a lot of amazing guitars, but they didn't have anything specific for the R&B space. And so um, they sent me this guitar and we're kind of trying to figure out how we can kind of create something. Not necessarily like a, a my own signature model, but maybe just something that I feel like their platform could cater it more specifically for R&B players. So this is the one that I'm using now. It's the ANZ um, Prestige. It's really cool. Uh, I like the contouring or whatever. It's like almost like a super strat. It's not technical like a strat with the- I mean, it's definitely all- awesome. Oh no, you got a humbucker. Yeah, so uh, that's one of the reasons why like, most of my guitars are like HSS, um, but it's just volume and tone and then like uh, this, Switch kind of mods the sounds a little bit, which is kind of cool. Does so, that make that humbucker single coil? The switch? I can, yes, yeah. Okay. So, or is it a pull? No, no. It's the switch. Yes, yeah, the switch. Yeah, for sure. got links always yeah. in the in the description down below so gotcha. if people wanted to uh reach out could they study with you yes for sure if you want to join the the camp uh, you go to carriescamp.com it's k-e-r-r-y-s k-a-m-p.com so camp with the k carry too smooth marshall yeah is your father carry marshall he's carry marshall senior so i'm wow. a junior how's that feel it feels good, you know what I mean? Like, it, growing up as a kid, like, I was always Little Carrie, so, like, it depends on how you know me. <laughs> yeah. If you know me as Little Carrie, then I know you know me from a certain space in my life. No one was saying junior? No, everybody was like, that's Little Carrie. So. Little Carrie. Yeah, yeah, Big so. Carrie, Little Carrie. <laughs> exactly. All right. Um, and then the Too Smooth became a branding, kind of a marketing thing. In Birmingham, um, there was a guitar player, a good friend of mine, his name was Keith Cashmere. Williams. Ooh, nice. And so jazz player, I didn't want to necessarily do jazz, but I wanted to understand the art of marketing and branding myself. How can I make myself stand out outside of my playing? What can I do? And he was like, well, you got to learn how to market yourself. And I'm like, I don't have anything that I can just, I'm Carrie Marshall, but also there's an artist in Carrie Marshall, in Birmingham that's known as Carrie Marshall. And I want people to associate with me being the painter. Yeah. So that's where the two smooth was like the differentiator so that way I could stand out and I'd be like, I'm the artist that paints. Carrie, too smooth, Marshall. I wanted to ask you, what was the first thing you remember learning on guitar? For me, it definitely was more like a song. So growing up in the church, um, a holiness Pentecostal church, you had to be able to play like, we call it shout music, right? It's where people are like dancing it. Kind yeah. of. So for me, you just had to be able to do this. Just had to work on the rhythm, so just. But just work on the rhythm. Having that, I guess like Corey Wong would call it like, you know, just your rhythm hand going. If you could do that well enough and have like the older generation kind of like dancing underneath you, then you would win. So that was like my thing that I wanted to perfect. Starting with. point yeah. that you can expand on. Yeah, I mean, from there you can do a whole lot of different other options. <laughs> So it morphed over time, but just initially. If you can keep it right there, you were good to go. Is there a song you wish you had written or a riff? Yeah, if I would have wrote How Does It Feel, that would have been like my golden ticket. D'Angelo. D'Angelo. Let's see it, let's see it. Okay.
All right, once again, I want to thank my friend, Carrie Too Smooth Marshall. Uh, he's a great guitar teacher, so if you're interested in learning more about uh, studying his style, you can check out the links for all his stuff in the description below, and hopefully uh, we'll have him on the channel again, so look out for some more uh, cool techniques from, from this awesome dude. Thanks again, man. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah I appreciate it. See you guys later. Thank you.